Oh dear, oh dear. This is not a drill. To paraphrase the famed philosopher Eminem, guess who's back? Back again. Liz Truss is back. Tell a friend. Now, some in her position might go, well, I crashed the economy by pursuing catastrophically unpopular policies of shoveling more wealth into the bank accounts of those who already have way too much money. I caused people's mortgages to hurtle upwards during an already epic cost of living crisis. My premiership collapsed after 49 days when I was left with approval ratings somewhere between tuberculosis and the bubonic plague. And my legacy is destroying any chance of the Tories winning the next election within reason and possibly shattering the party's electoral fortunes for a generation. Maybe, some might conclude in her position, just maybe, politics just is not my forte and I'll duck out and do something else rather than, I mean, helpfully helping destroy the Conservatives. I'm not saying I'm trying to stop her here. Is this Liz Truss's strategy though? What I've just outlined, it is not. Instead, I honestly think she's trying to reclaim the leadership of the Tories after the election. I think she wants to be leader of the Conservatives again. I think she's that delusional. I think she's essentially departed, probably long ago, any semblance of the sort of reality you and I might live in and decided that she is the right person for the job all over again. It sounds absurd, it sounds ridiculous, but I don't see what else she's actually planning here. Now, at the very least, she's trying to desperately ensure that what some call justonomics, and I call economic poison, wins the battle for the heart and soul of the Conservative Party. Now, she's done a big public speech in an attempt to possibly mount some sort of coup. Let's just hear a little bit from her, shall we? I'm having a rather more relaxing September than I did last year. And you might well ask, why am I back talking about the same topic? But it's one year ago that I launched my government and our economic policy. And I'm speaking here today not because I want to relive the events of last year. I certainly don't. And it's not because I'm keen to be back in Downing Street. I'm certainly not. It's because one year after saying that economic growth was the central issue for our country, and since then we've heard a lot of people say that, right across the political spectrum. There still is not agreement on what has caused the problems of a lack of economic growth, but also what on earth we're going to do about them. Oh, I'm having a rather more relaxing September than I did last year. <laughs> how droll, how amusing, how witty, Liz. Because the drama last year was really all about Liz Ross. That's what we were really all anxious about. How's Liz doing? Oh, must be awful for her being stuck in all that maelstrom that she brought on herself and the country. Not about the actual victims of her policies. Not those who will be paying mortgages on top of the existing nightmare of the cost of living crisis. Now, let's just listen. Because she's saying there, well, you know, we've got to argue for what the actual policy is going forward. And, you know, in terms of how Britain goes ahead and solves its problems. So let's actually listen to what she's arguing for. This means slowing the rates of increase to benefits and tougher work requirements. It means raising the retirement age further. And in the energy sector, we need to get on with fracking and abolish the windfall tax. We should diverge properly from the EU so we can increase competitiveness in areas like financial services. And finally, we should, as many other Western countries are already doing, delay implementing net zero commitments, such as the ban on new petrol and diesel vehicles from 2030. Other environmental regulations which are hiking the cost of living, like enforcing the replacement of gas and oil boilers, should also be abandoned. This will not be easy, but it will be worth doing. Lovely stuff from Liz there. Let's just go through a list, shall we? She wants to slash benefits in real terms, which means emptying the pockets of millions of low-paid workers in work benefits, because millions of people, most people in poverty in this country, and work in working households. Millions of people work, they earn their poverty, their wages have to be topped up in order for them to live because of how low their wages are. Um, she wants to empty their pockets even further, even though their real terms pay has gone through the worst squeeze since the Napoleonic age. She also wants to empty the pockets for the disabled people. That's what happens if you slash benefits in real terms. You hammer vulnerable people, again, to repeat, during a cost of living crisis, while it remains boom time for those at the top, not least those who fund the Conservative Party, the Tory donor class. She wants to hike the retirement age so people work till they drop, 
which means particularly having working class people, because the poorer you are, the lower your life expectancy and the lower your healthy lifespan. If you live in a working class community, your average life expectancy is lower. And when I say healthy lifespan, I mean the period of life you have before you develop often serious life limiting illnesses is lower than someone from a richer background. That's the impact of what she's arguing for. She wants to start fracking uh, because despite it being a threat in every front, air, water, noise pollution, and renewable energy, just aside from the climate emergency and all of that I just mentioned, is a far more promising source of energy security, as well as a creator of good, decent, well-paid jobs. She wants to scrap that windfall tax so energy companies can make vast profits out of a crisis, which, by the way, goes against even Thatcherite nostrums, because Margaret Thatcher similarly imposed a windfall tax on the banks in 1981 on the basis that they'd enjoy... They'd enjoyed bunker profits, not because of their own doing, because of interest rate hikes. She wants to diverge properly from the EU. What is she talking about here? We already have a massively hard Brexit, which is based on a hard rupture with the European Union. That means imposing a load of red tape on anyone who wants to export to the European Union, which is kind of funny because those pushing for Brexit claimed it was all about a bonfire of regulations. Um, other than throwing the Northern Irish peace process under a bus, what's she pushing for here? Because we've already established that a hard Brexit and the Good Friday Agreement, which ended a conflict which killed around 3,500 people, are not exactly buzzing buddies. She wants to delay net zero commitments. So now we really are into throwing the future existence of human civilization under a bus here. Did she see what happened with all those extreme weather events over the summer? Did that pass her by? Did she read the news? Did she watch what was going on? Now, what does she think is going to happen to the Earth and human civilization over the coming years? Because the scientific consensus is that the emissions we've already pushed into the atmosphere will lead to even more, far more, extreme weather events, death, population displacement, famine, drought, you name it. Without drastic measures, we face disaster. And net zero is about an opportunity. It's about cleaner air. Pollution kills more globally than tobacco. Things like cheaper public transport and more effective public transport that actually works. Uh, creating new jobs rather than allowing other countries to become, at our expense, the centre of new green technologies. She wants things like, you know, pushing back this ban on diesel cars and, and so on. You know, allowing, if you can just basically keep on allowing people to buy diesel cars and gas boilers when the cost of all these things is going to spiral. This is so unbelievably stupid. <laughs> it's just stupid. It's, re it's just, oh, it's just crackpot stuff, isn't it? I mean, not replacing gas and oil boilers. <laughs> it's just cliched right-wing nonsense. Just Anyway, as it happens, it's been reported Rishi Sunak is going to water down net zero commitments in the next election in an attempt to trigger a race to the bottom on climate with Labour. So Trussonomics already, before the defeat, is in the ascendancy. Now, Truss has previously said that growth in this country since the 80s has been stagnant. She's absolutely right. She's since revised that to 1997, because that's when New Labour came to power. That's awfully convenient, where she goes, well, actually, it's that period. That's when it all became stagnant. Not true. Stick to your original claim. It was correct. Because since the 80s onwards, what happened in the 80s was Thatcherism, and the level of growth in the 80s was the same as the average of the much demonised 1970s, but less equitably distributed. And in fact, since the 80s, the average trend of growth has been downwards. The heyday of growth in this country is the 1960s, when we had high taxes on the rich, public ownership, strong trade unions, state intervention in the economy. But the average trend has been downwards, and what less growth we get has been less equitably distributed, meaning stagnant living standards for average citizens, even as it's boom time for those at the top, including inflating asset bubbles at our expense. Now, the policies she pursued, Thatcherism, which she wants to double down on, hollowed out our industries, left entire communities bereft, meant a crumbling public realm, crumbling infrastructure, as well as that massive inequality between stagnant living standards while it's boom time for those at the top. A country just getting poorer and poorer compared to other richer nations. But what this reveals, whether she takes over the leadership again in opposition, good luck with that one, Conservatives, I think what's going to happen, because it isn't popular, they're going to double down on the culture war stuff. That's what they're going to start going on about, above all else. Trans people, migrants, refugees, that kind of thing. That's what they're going to double down on. They're going to do the playbook of what happened to the Republican Party in the 19... Uh, sorry, in when Obama came to power. That's what they're planning. It's so obviously clear. Whether or not she takes over, or her ideas triumph, that's where they're heading. A fusion of 
of deranged right-wing economics where we've already seen the impact and unhinged right-wing culture war. Well, looking forward for it anyway. Please like, do subscribe, do support us on patreon.com forward slash I'll see you in a bit.